Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio. Welcome to this new tutorial for Timeline Salsa Core. We have a new version. It is version 2.5.0, and we are remaking all of the videos for that since there are quite a few new features. Speaking of that, we released, uh, prior to this video, we released a new features video. So if you haven't checked that out, you might want to look at it first. And uh, we'll be doing three videos. The first will be Salsa, this video, and then we'll follow that up with Emoter. And then the last video will be covering the Eyes module. So let's kick off with Salsa. And first off, in this scene, we have two Emoter guys. One is just a duplicate of the other. And they are labeled left and right from our perspective. So this is the left guy and this is the right guy. And now what we need is a timeline. So let's go ahead and create an empty game object. Let's rename this and we're going to just use a single timeline. Create the playable file here. We'll call it tutorial. And immediately we get a new track and we don't want this. So we'll go ahead and delete it. And instead, let's add a salsa control track. And now this is different from the previous version that bound to an audio source. And this one actually binds to a salsa component. And uh, so what we need to do is link a game object that has a salsa component. And ultimately, we're just linking to the salsa component here. We're binding it to the track. And now let's add a salsa control clip. And this is new. Uh, you see it's red here, indicating that something needs to be done, or an error state, if you will. And what we can do is just drop a clip on here. Now these clips are from our examples pack that you can get on our downloads portal. And they're just basically split up files of that main promo mail voice that's included with the product. And so they've got a little bit of compression to them, but they're fine for our purposes. So I don't know if you noticed, but when I dropped that clip on there, it resized the track clip. The length of the track clip is based on the length of the audio file. Okay. Let me make sure that we're on seconds and snap to frame and edge snap are disabled. All right. All right. So the next thing you might have noticed is as soon as we drop the audio clip on here, we got this little dialogue. And this allows us to override two dynamic settings in the Salsa component. Okay, so it's this primary bias here in Dynamics and this Global Dynamics under the Global Override settings. And this one down here applies to all VisEMs that are configured. And when they're played, it basically dampens them to a percentage of their full value. The max that they're going to get is whatever this percentage is. So if it's one, then it'll be 100% of whatever is configured, or at least they can go that high, okay? So now the other one, the primary bias, uses a variation of the size or the max extent that the VISIM is configured based on the audio analysis. And basically what it will do is use this value as the minimum starting position, and whatever is between this value and one, it's an infinite variation based on the analysis, and that adjusts the expression dynamics. And that's the difference between those two, and now you can control them in timeline on your audio file. And what we could do is use this global dynamics to give us kind of a representation of, say, a whisper versus normal speaking versus yelling, okay? And so what I'll do is configure three different clips here. And this isn't really a great way to do this because these clips are really just normal speaking, but, and it's not like you're going to get the full effect of whispering and speaking and yelling. But that's the way we're going to configure it, and you can use your imagination to fill in the blanks. Put number three there, and let's go ahead and configure the dynamics. And, uh, oh, I didn't mention it, but this yellow color indicates that it is basically read-only, so we can't do anything with it, and we have to enable the fact that we're going to override the dynamics. And we get this little indicator down here 
that the overridden fields will be restored at clip end. So basically what happens is on the leading edge of the clip, we're going to record the settings that are present before the clip started, and then we'll adjust these settings to whatever we have configured here. And we're gonna configure this to about 30%-ish. Close enough, and we'll leave the advanced dynamics bias where it is. And so what would happen is, as soon as the playhead comes and passes the leading edge, it's going to keep track of what the settings were beforehand, and then it's going to change them to what we have configured. And then when we hit the exit, the trailing edge, the override fields will be restored at the clip end. As we get past it, it's going to restore it to what it was when, before we started. In this case, it was 0.5 and 1. So let's put this back to about 30%. And then we'll go to the second clip and we'll override and we'll put it at about 60%. Uh, and then on the third clip, we want that one to be full. So we'll just leave that to the default settings. Now you have to be careful if you're changing this stuff in the background, say programmatically, it may not be one when it hits that last clip. So we can ensure it by just enabling the dynamics and setting as one, which we're going to go ahead and do. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll tighten these up just a little bit. And then we'll hit play. And we're going to immediately have a problem. And uh, the audio starts playing just as soon as we start playing. And that happens because when we applied the one click, the audio source automatically gets the play on awake set. And what we need to do is make sure that is not checked. And we could also just remove this audio clip. Uh, but since it's going to be replaced anyway, we can just leave it. And let's fix the right guy. We'll disable this option. And then now we can go back to our timeline and hit play. The unique technology we can see the that it's very muted. Quality lip sync automation for your 2D and 3D character. And models. there's a little bit Results more action here on this one. Jawbone animations and eliminate labor. And then this next one's going to be what we'll call yelling. Okay, there's going to be a lot more dynamics here. He's getting the full range of the dynamics. So let's stop that. And let's do a little bit of dialogue. So let's add another salsa control track and we'll link that to the right guy this time. And we'll just pull this one down. And instead of the male, we will use the female part two. And we'll make her just a normal speak. And we'll just kind of overlap them here a little bit as well. And we'll hit play. And we've got his the dynamics are muted, so it's, we'll call that whisper. And then when she starts up, hers are a little bit more expressive, normal speak. With a zero requirement for pre -processing and then he starts talking audio 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 again, audio and he's at full dynamics. Effort, allowing you to okay, so we see how that works. And there's one other feature that uh, was actually present in the previous version, and we had a customer that requested the ability to scrub audio while playing, and now you can drag the head back and forth, and you can hear the audio scrubbing, and wherever you drop it is going to be where the audio starts playing from. Okay, so I think you get the idea. And I believe that is about all we have to cover for the Salsa module in uh, this new version of Timeline Salsa Core. So I'm going to end the video here. And in the next video, we'll pick up where we left off and we'll cover Emoter for the new version of Timeline Salsa Core. So take care and we'll see you in the next video.